Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. I am the Nerd Lust Daddy, and today we continue our series reviewing every North American live-action video game film adaptation theatrical release. And we've reached a milestone here, as we are now on the last four movies in this review series. Well, at least until new adaptations get released in the future. Really? It's been a year almost already? Time sure goes fast. Chop it. Let's jump into today's review and see what it holds for us as we delve into a world of social deduction, mystery, and monstrosity as we review 2021's Werewolves Within. Uh, Dada, what the fuck is this? Well, Pids, it's a film adaptation of a VR social deduction video game that's itself a video game adaptation of a social deduction party game typically played with standard playing cards. I see. Well, this better be good, then. I'm with you there, Pids. And surprisingly, this is the highest rated adaptation out of all of these so far. So, let's see for ourselves. Now, Werewolves Within was released in North American theaters on June 21st, 2021. At this time, one game had been released in the video game series, and that game is Werewolves Within. We need to keep in mind that this video game is also based on a social deduction party game that was played with cards that's gone by many names such as Mafia and most directly Werewolf. With that in mind, we will be using everything as a very loose comparison and mainly judge the film on its own merit and whether or not it conveys the same sense of suspense, mystery, and deduction that all forms of the game do. Now for the plot of the game, in any form, it's pretty straightforward. A werewolf, or werewolves, are loose within a town killing people, and it's up to the inhabitants to use deduction to try and figure out who is the werewolf. That's it. It's a thin plot that relies mostly on the sense of paranoia created by the unknown factor to drive the interest in gameplay. Now, the film does the heavy lifting when it comes to creating a more robust plot. Forest Ranger Finn Wheeler has been newly assigned to the town of Beaverfield. It's a small town that currently has its residents divided over a planned new pipeline that would run through the town. Finn meets the local postal carrier, Cecily, who takes him on a tour of the town and introduces him to the town's residents as well as filling him in on the backstory of the pipeline and the town inhabitants. Later that evening, a blizzard knocks out the power to the town and all of the residents gather at the local lodge run by Janine Sherman. Finn heads out into the town to investigate the loss of power and while out he discovers multiple power generators that have been destroyed by what appears to be some sort of large animal due to them having huge claw marks upon them. Finn then ends up coming across the dead body of Janine's missing husband Dave, who appears to have been mauled by some kind of large animal. Panic spreads among the residents and is only exacerbated by Dr. Jane Ellis, who has been gathering samples of hairs that upon further testing seem to have come from some strange half-wolf, half-man type of creature, thus leading to the assumption that a werewolf is in line now, and that one of them must be it. The residents then begin trying to deduce which one of them could be the werewolf, while also trying to stay held up in the lodge and fend off any potential further attacks from the monster. Alright, so the games are pretty thin and straightforward when it comes to the plot, and the movie had to expand upon it. But the movie does this very well by making everyone involved a very possible suspect. This helps to create the heightened sense of paranoia and whodunit atmosphere that the games themselves exude in their gameplay. An admirable job has been done here to take a thin frame of a plot and expand upon it in movie form, so this gets a hawoo from me. Hids, what did you think of the plot? Hawoo! So what about setting and world representation? Well, there isn't much to compare the film with considering the setting is all in the player's minds other than within the VR game where the setting is one of a more medieval style village. I think what matters most here then is if the film setting helps convey and adds to the sense of looming threat and paranoia. I'd say it succeeds. The setting of the northern small town cut off from the rest of the world helps convey the sense of being trapped and having to fend for oneself. Furthermore, Making all of the characters eventually trapped together within a single building amps this up even further. 
The sense of impending danger, as well as the threat of mistrust through the entire group, is palpable and conveys the sense of fear, paranoia, and mystery that is found in the different versions of these games, but brings it successfully to life on the big screen. Setting and world representation do their job very well, so they get a hawoo from me. Kids, what did you think of them? Hawoo! Let's jump into the characters. We're going to go over a few notable ones here, as there is no real connection between the film characters and those within the games. So I'd like to just highlight a few standout characters and performances, though everyone in this film does a very good job. So let's start with Dr. Jane Ellis. Portrayed by Rebecca Henderson, known for her role in the Netflix series Russian Doll. Here she portrays the scientist that is held up in the lodge with the rest of the town. Now she brings a real sense of tension and paranoia to the film as she darts into the scene and then withdraws to her room to test the evidence. The overly nervous and protective attitude she has helps bring the feeling of paranoia and tension out in the film. She's an enjoyable and integral character that gets a hawoo from me. Kids, what did you think of Dr. Ellis? Hawoo! Joaquin Wolfson, played by Harvard Gillian of none other than What We Do in the Shadows fame. I was excited to see what he would bring to this dark comedy, and I wasn't disappointed. His portrayal of one half of the wealthy gay couple that lives within the town is entertaining, funny, and adorable. Much like in the TV series role he is known for, he gets an ecstatic hawoo from me. Kids, what did you think of Joaquin? Hawoo! Cecily Moore, portrayed by Milana Ventra, known for her role as Squirrel Girl in Marvel Rising. Here she plays the local mail carrier who helps Finn get to know the town and the locals. She's cheery and friendly, but also able to call people out and stand up for herself. I think she plays an interesting compliment to the character of Finn and gets a hawoo from me. Kids, what did you think of Cecily? Hawoo! Finn Wheeler, played by Sam Richardson, known for the comedies Detroiters and I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. Here he's the forest ranger that's new in town. The portrayal is one of a man who's recently had hard times in life and may be able to take this change of location and events to find himself in change for the better. It's a very good character and performance and one that I was happy to see from the veteran comedic actor. He gets a hawoo from me. Kids, what did you think of Finn? Hawoo! Time for final verdicts. We've got a good and involving plot that improves upon the game's origins. Setting and world representation are fantastic with locations and set pieces that help add to the tension. Finally, we have a good cast of actors and characters that play well off of one another and help heighten the feeling of seclusion and paranoia. Let's check in with the Pids and see what he thinks first. Pids, what did you think of Werewolves Within? Oh, woo! Agreed, Pids. I was very surprised by this little horror comedy film. It came out of nowhere and is based on a social deduction VR game that's based on an old social deduction party game. I didn't expect much from it, but it is gripping and funny. Everything surprisingly just works and works very well. I can give this one an 8sies out of 10sies. It's pretty damn good. I don't think you even have to be a fan of any of the game versions to enjoy this, as it has little bearing on the adaptation overall. If you're into horror comedy films, I'd check this out as I think you'll highly enjoy it. Bits and I want to thank you all for once again tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. If you enjoyed our video, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share to show your support. And don't forget to also check us out and subscribe on Twitch as well as follow us on Twitter. Until next time, I'm the Nerd Lust Daddy reminding you all to not be chip futters to each other. Body autonomy for all reproductive rights for women, and peace, love, and happiness to all. Take us out, Pids. Thank yous for watchings. See you again next week. <laughs>